solutions. Daily 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 solutions. All right, I'm ready. Take me. Take me away. I want to go. Hey, everybody. This is Ashkan. This is Graham here, and. Today's question is, my workplace is shutting down for about a week. What do I do with my float pod over this time? Good. Yep, I say just throw a customer in and, you know, <laughs> see how long they can last. Yeah, tell them it's a normal 60-minute float. <laughs> and then leave, lock the door. <laughs> uh, so there, there are some preparations, right? If you, yeah. what, so what happens if we do nothing? <laughs> Pandemonium, <laughs> chaos. chaos. <laughs> you have cats and dogs living together. <laughs> uh, so you're mostly worried about, I'd say, two things. One is your sanitation. And I you were going to say sanity. <laughs> one, the other one is your sanity. One is your sanitation, the other one is salt crystallization. Yeah. Those are like the two big things that are going to be uh-ohs for you if, you, if you. if you just leave a float tank for a week. The, it depends so on the about... float tank, right? I mean, so... Yeah. so uh, what can happen is basically your your salt water is uh, at a certain temperature, and if it falls below that temperature, then the saturation point of your of your solution will be hit, and you'll just have salt starting to crystallize in the water. Right, because our float tanks keep our our uh, salt dissolved at that temperature, at right. that concentration. Right. So if you change either of those, if the concentration goes up, if the temperature goes down. All of a sudden, that crystallization point changes. So yeah. that's what's going on here. You're gonna start growing salt crystals, and so you know, everyone. Most of the time, your float tank is heated. It's got some sort of heating pads, some some sort of system, so that the tub itself is heated. And so that would probably be fine temperature wise if you were to leave it for a week. But, 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 your pipes and your pump usually aren't affected by that heater going into the heat going into the water. So you need some kind of way to be able to cycle the water that's in your pipes and in your pump back into the tank so that could be heated as well. Otherwise, all the water in the pipes and in the pump will slowly start to crystallize. And literally, <laughs> you'll just have chunks of salt crystals in your pipes and specifically around the impeller in your pump so that it, it can't spin and it won't actually be able to work. And hopefully this will never happen to you, but it's also kind of like a little bit of an initiation. Yeah, like it's I feel not, like, it's I feel happened like to us like time. multiple times. Like it's not <laughs> we know about it and we keep screwing it up. But uh, so this is the this is really to say that there are there are float tanks out there that uh, have safety guards kind of in in place for this. Like there's a lot of float tanks that in their controller will just have some sort of rule that says like if the pump hasn't been run for six hours, it's just going to kick on and do a cycle by itself. Yeah. And that's to stop this problem from happening, right? So, like, the, the tank itself is being heated and the water's circulating ever so often. And that kind of stops anything from dropping to temperature too much that it gets to the point of solidifying. Yep. Other ones like reservoir systems that kind of kick all the water back into the reservoir and right. keep that on a tiny cycle or and something like heated. that can do that too. Yeah. And, you know, like, the most low-tech version is just to go in every day and run the pump for 10 minutes and go home, you know? And it's not like that. Usually, that's what we do. Like, we're we're closed so infrequently, like, on Thanksgiving <laughs> and, like, on Christmas. Like, literally, the, there's always just one employee who is just like, oh, I'll stop by and, like, run the pump. Because the point. second most low-tech solution is automatic and not that hard, <laughs> which yeah. is really funny. So it still doesn't make sense for us to go that high, which is just going down to Radio Shack, basically, and getting a little outlet timer and you can just yeah, set that to you can. turn I, on and, yeah. and be able to run your pump on a, a regular if you business. have like the electrical set up correctly yeah if you, you have it sort of on an with. auto on kind of thing these and little like, adjustments yeah. yeah works with your gfci and your float tank's not super easy in the way <laughs> like there's as long as you as long as the electrical safety is still regarded there are there are smart plugs and smart switches and things you can control from yep. your phone to turn on and off and things you can put on timers there's and all I'm, sorts of technology i know a fair amount of centers like who especially are occasionally closed for two or three days at a time or or something like that a little more regularly who that that is absolutely what they do you know they they have some kind of 
automated switch or timer system. Yeah. And, and so that's get, how they make sure they don't get have something. To... Just make sure you're doing it. Say, don't just like plug a timer power strip in or something because <laughs> you're not. You don't want to have power strips and stuff like that. So as long as as long as electrical safety is in there. Um, and yeah, so so there's a range of solutions for them. None of them are really that difficult. Some float tanks just come with that problem kind yeah. of solved already. <clears throat> and again, like worst case scenario, going in every day and turning it on is not really that big of a deal. So that's that's one side of it. <clears throat> and the other side is actually pretty much the same the same thing. Like if your water just sits stagnant like that for for a long time, uh, the sanitation can can get a little bit out of hand. Even though there's no one floating in it, even though you know you you had dosed it beforehand, and if you have UV, it's kind of running through the system. You know, yeah. at least one cycle every. I mean, it's basically for that, right? Six like hours it or depends something. on depends on what you're doing to sanitize. But if you're focusing a lot on UV and you're not running the filtration system, then none of it's being affected by UV, right? Uh, and same thing for things that you're dosing, like chlorine, or or if you're adding hydrogen peroxide with your UV. Uh, those levels will go down over time, even if no one's floating, if they're catching the residuals of, of whatever else. And so if you just leave for a week and those things hit zero on day one, then all of a sudden those levels are gone in your system. So basically yeah. that. you want to, you so we, like like... we like to kick up the notch a little bit when, you, when we are about to go on some kind of break or when we know that the shop's going to be closed down for a while. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's the same thing, though. The same, you have to just keep, you want to keep running the system basically, mm-hmm. and some, some sort of frequency to, to make sure things are still operating kind of like they would be were you to be open. Like you want to have water going past that UV light or you want to make sure your levels are, are being maintained. Uh, and again, this comes into the actual system that you have. Some systems have auto dosers. So all you need, like there is a chance that all of this could be automated, right? Like the yep, pump turns on by itself, maintained, maintained yeah. temperature is maintained by Sanitation itself. Sanitation is maintained. There's auto dosers that are auto dosing by themselves. They take care of your kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just start booking Everything. people it's in just, for you. Yeah. Um, so, so basically, it depends on the equipment you have, and short of that, like you just need to fill in manually whichever parts aren't automated. Yep. Um, but thinking that you could just leave a tank without making plans for either of those things um, is is problematic. Yeah. And the more this relies on you, the less you can just like actually leave for a week and <laughs> go to yeah. Jamaica and k- kick it on the beach, you know. Um, is there is there anything? Else, I mean, so I guess outside of the pod, I just had one other recommendation as long as we're on the topic of taking off for a little bit, which is, you know, update your your holiday hours or update your uh, kind of uh, vacation hours for that time on different websites to let yeah. people know. Put out something on social media. Change you know, your voicemail. Yeah, definitely change your voicemail. <laughs> uh, things like that can go a really long way. On your on your scheduling software, have a message at the top or change the message at the top to say that you're going to be closed from these dates and. Uh, not to expect yeah. to reach you. Um, we usually, I mean, what what we usually do is, if you have staff or something, we usually have someone still answering voicemails and stuff. Yeah. And you can, what we do is, we just set up a Google Voice number, and we have our shop phone forward to that Google Voice number, and then that Google Voice number can be accessed anywhere. You know, you can see voicemails just on through your email, and we have someone who. Uh, you know, you don't even need to have someone like constantly answering the phones or anything, but someone could check the voicemails once a day and just deal with whoever called and left a voicemail and get back to them. And like, you know, with a little bit of work, you can maintain kind of a nicer customer experience through being closed. Yep. So again, just another little, uh, side tip about that. Anything, anything else on taking off for a vacation for a week? Um, yeah, I mean, it's a little terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the, but the you deserve like, it. <laughs> <laughs> the thought that like your pump, you could have a leak or something on day one and be like Come a back week from before you yeah. before you actually were there to notice it is is a terrifying thought. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Especially we normally run our shop twenty four hours a day, so even like leaving our pumps alone for four hours is something yeah. we don't usually have to think about as uh-huh. much. So yeah, you know, um, get over it. Take breaks for yourself. It'll probably be fine. Yeah, You'll probably be, be fine. fine. Like, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> um, and if you have any other questions, go to floatanksolutions.com slash podcast. Send them in to us. And uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Right. <laughs>